Talking about underwhelming. Algeria, a minus 149. Uh, basically didn't pick up the three points in the first game, but Burkina Faso did at plus 425. But listen, I, it was my banker of the first round matches, and it took the 96 minute. Don't worry, it was a penalty, and he stuck it away. But they were not great. Um, Zach, talk to me about Burkina Faso, because I thought that you talk about a team that went through the motions and thought they just had to turn up. They were very fortunate to pick up the three points, but they did. But they always kept their back door closed. Yeah, they did. And look, I think that's one thing that they have going for them. They do have a strong, organized, cohesive unit at the back with the likes of Tapsoba and Cabore. But uh, yeah, I, I do think that they were expecting this one to be a stroll going up against uh, a team like Mauritania that are not really accustomed to wins. I felt that they were, you know, very unsatisfactory, um, but just able to steal a, a win. But yeah, as far as Algeria goes, I think it was very much a Jekyll and Hyde performance, if you will. Uh, whilst the first half of their opening match against Angola resembled uh, their performances from that championship winning side from 2019, the second half uh, resembled the team from two years ago that failed to reach the knockout round. Angola, they fought back and scored with their only shot on target to secure a point. And uh, overall, Algeria were unable to respond after conceding that penalty. Algeria, they have so many weapons in, in attack, from Youssef Belayli to uh, the goal scorer Baghdad Buneja, who pulled off arguably the most beautiful disallowed goal in AFCON history. They've, of course, got Riyad Mahrez, who I thought was fairly quiet in the opening match, but uh, is definitely going to be motivated to turn things around. Do they have what it takes to keep things tight at the back, limit the mistakes, hold on to uh, a clean sheet and not concede any childish errors. I'm not so sure. I think we'll see both teams score here. I think we're going to see a more confident and coordinated Burkina Faso, and they're going to be raring to go and high on adrenaline after stealing a victory at the death against Mauritania. And I also think that uh, they're going to be aware that they got lucky the first time. They've got to really show uh, who Burkina Faso are from, from the from the first whistle, and I would not be surprised if we see Bertrand Traore start after his last second penalty heroics for Burkina, for Burkina Faso. I think that we're going to see them play with a lot more initiative, a lot more composure in the final third. I think we're going to see them find the back of the net. Burkina Faso have scored in each of their last six matches, and I'm backing them to make that seven here. Many questions need answering uh, in these second round matches because Algeria need to basically get themselves together. They need a few of their well-known players to turn up. I had to have a little look. I knew that Morris was playing, but I had to see if he was still out there. Uh, and Burkina Faso, Tony, are only minus 110 to score. But the draw is a runner here at plus 240. Um, I, I see maybe both teams scoring. But Burkina Faso, with that win in the 96th minute, they get they get a point here. They are secure as well. Yeah, you can see that happening. But for me, I'm going with Algeria and both teams to score. As we've all, okay. all alluded to, I really think that Burkina Faso could score, even though they did get lucky with that last-minute Bertrand Traore goal. But I really expect Algeria to kind of turn up because from winning it in 2019 and then obviously that torrid um, performance in 2021, Algeria ha do have a lot of experienced players. And I feel like if they get that midfield balance right, you have the likes of Ismail Benassar, Hussam Awa as well. You've got Yusuf Attal in the fence. They've got players who can turn up for Algeria. And especially after that performance in their first game, they really need to start stepping it up. And the same with Burkina Faso as well. Even though they were just going through the motions and they got their goal in the end, they still got the three points. So I do expect Burkina Faso to kind of turn up in a performance as well. Because we've got to realise, Burkina Faso, even though they kind of get looked in the, um, the AFCON, they were runners-up in 2013. They came third in 27. 2017 and fourth for 2021. So they are actually quite good at at the AFCON and they were topping their qualifying groups as well. So I do expect Burkina Faso to get on the goal sheet, but I feel like Algeria, especially with that draw in the first game, they'll be looking at this game, seeing that as a must win and a game that they need to sh turn up. And hopefully we actually get to see Riyad Mahrez because it, <laughs> it's so weird. You could barely see him that game. It's not the Riyad, Riyad Mahrez we're expected to see, but it takes time for players to go into the tournament, as you can see. So I really do expect both teams to score, but Maybe Algeria just to nick this one. Yeah, listen, I'm, I'm loving the fact that this game is one of those where the sm so-called smaller nation basically are, are outplaying 
the, the line and their odds. I mean, again, you look at the likes of Mares, they're, they're not physically strong enough. So if I've got someone who I just say, listen, just make sure that when he gets the ball, he's got his back to goal and he's not going anywhere. Don't give him time or space because I can still play at my age if you give me time and space. So just get tight and go up against them. Uh, what was that? Minus 149 for Algeria. I'm not sure I like that at all. Uh, let's have a little look at the official picks. Both teams to score at plus 137, Algeria. And both teams to score at plus 400. And for, again, I've stayed away because... I just don't know what I'm going to get from the favourites. <laughs>